Hello, welcome to the Athabasca Pottery Club. Today we're going to be doing a slab and using it in one of our preformed bowls. So these were pre-made by one of our club members so you can get a uniform bowl each time without having to wheel. It just takes a little bit of practice to get them in. So first thing is going to be your foot. So I've got this rolled out. Just do the rough edge. I'm just going to skim a little bit of extra material off for that foot. Just don't go too shallow because it will dip in. I'm going to turn my stuff a little gouging your clay, which I did. Oops. Oh, well. Okay, take some of your newfound clay. You're going to do your, well, if you want to call them a snake, you can call them a snake. Whatever you want. You usually want to have a little bait powder. You just kind of tap it in. Just so it doesn't stick as it dries. Because you can't put plastic in because of the foot. Dump out the excess. There we go. And now, I'm not sure you can see this. You would have put it in, just kind of squish it in. Very yet, you try and get it as flat as you can. You'll see that it kind of walks as you push it. So you kind of want it level with the two edges, but you don't want it too too high or too too low. And it will want to pop out. That's the whole purpose of the baby powder, which is fine. You're going to want that later. This does have a crack in it. We're just going to ignore it. We'll have to do some patching on the back afterwards, but... Okay, so we've got our ring now, and now as close as you want it to stick, you can get your slip. Got our slip here, just a little bit dry. You're going to slather on your slip onto this. So you want this to stick, you do not want it to come off. When you glaze it, it will add some extra support to it, but this will be your primary thing for now. Okay. Now for the fun part, is getting that into here. Usually if there is no foot, you can use a piece of plastic and cradle and tap it. But because there is a foot, we have to manually pick it up. Let's get move some of the decorations off to the sides with a little more working room. Pick it up, ladle it in. And kind of like before, you put your thumb in the back and you push in so that you don't ruin it. If you wanted, you could take in the roller and roll the pattern on. I wanted it smooth for a different um, idea. Pick it up, just push in. You push too hard, you'll put fingerprints in it. So go slow. If the sides are really steep, it's much harder than if they're spread out like this. This one's pretty easy. As you can see, I got an air bubble here. You take your sharp, lance it. And push the air out. You might find more air, so lands the in to get all the air out. So any air bubbles in the kiln will explode. Then just to go over this, I'm gonna get a little more slip. Put it on. Just put a little bit of a patch so that you can't really notice where I blew the bubble and lost a whole bunch of air. Yeah, keep pushing this in more. Keep pushing. So you can see it's starting to crack here from the stress lines of the weight. It's because of all the extra clay. I'm just gonna go in, straight up and down just to give it a quick trim. 
But as you can see, it catches every once in a while, so just watch that. That's our excess clay. And now, because we are fairly flat, we're just going to press down where those seams would have been, just to try and join the slip as best we can. Um, usually use a sponge, it's a little bit easier, because your fingers do make very noticeable fingerprints. Or you can try and smooth it afterwards, which is easier with a sponge in the cleaning stage. If you get little bits like this, they can either come out now, or if they're being a pest, wait until the cleaning stage, because they'll just wipe right out. Things like this will smooth out in the cleaning stage as well. I'm just going to try and tap this down with my palm, because your palm's broader. It doesn't leave as much of a mark. Okay. If I was smart, I would have brought a sponge here, and I would have sponged the edge to smooth them. There's something really stiff right here that doesn't want to catch. So I'm going to sponge this in a little bit here just to take down the edge and smooth it out. I think we're going to do like a little ocean seam this time. I use this mold here to make a little turtle. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, blue in here for the water, some San Diego on the outside for a nice brown. Um, just use your little baby powder, make some shells. It's kind of like Play-Doh in a way. You make your own if you're talented. Normally you use slip. This time I'm not going to because I want to um, glaze them separately. So when you build, you can either use slip to attach them then so that they stay put, or you can leave them separate, just line them up, but then when you pull them off to fire them, that way you can actually glaze them in your hands without having to worry about where they're touching and stuff. And then when you have this glazed and these glazed, take a little droplet of glaze, you put it on here, and then you stick it on. And when it fires, because it's melted glass, they'll actually fuse together. As long as you don't have too much glaze on, they'll actually meld without any runs. So I'm going to put him here. You probably need a few more turtles, though. Twelve should be enough, right? Let's hope so. So yeah, just going to kind of arrange them going downhill. I got some leaf guys to pretend we have some kelp. Smart kelp. We have some kelp down here too. Pretend it's down at the water's edge. We got a few rocks. Some more rocks. I can arrange them how I want now because they'll dry kind of in the right shape. Or better yet, we're gonna do a 3D thing where it kind of overlaps. That looks sharp, right? Maybe, kind of. He's not bending enough, right? Weeds are usually pretty bent up. Something like that. I don't know. Got a couple of snail shells. They're usually on the edges of beaches, right? A little starfish. A couple of shells. But I think 12 turtles should be enough, right? Oh, I got them all. I'm just going to put them in here and then let them dry, then pull them off once they're dry. So that way it keeps them safe as they dry. Like I just hit the water, he looks happy. Have him fly down. If you want, because you're going to glaze, you can put little markers, like one on the bottom of the turtle, then a one on the thing so you know exactly where to put them. Because you're going to glaze it, it's going to cover it, so you're not even going to see it, which is actually quite handy. I think we need him right there. Just to show that everything's kind of bunched in a few spots like it's natural. Mm -hmm. And if something doesn't look right, just pull it or change it later. What the person's going to use this for or how they're going to clean it if they get it dirty is beyond me, but it's not going to be my problem when I give this guy away to somebody. That'll be their problem then. I'm sure they'll be so thrilled. Look at all those turtles. I might have needed a few more just for overkill. Oh, we got clay, we got baby powder, why not? Okay. 
Next drop. Maybe the baby powder is going on the top. A little bit. Okay. Let's get our little mold done. I do these off seeing since it's taking me over an hour just to do these. And I use mold because I'm not very artistic. A little too much clay there. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. Just, there. Just clean them up. You can bend the pieces out of the mold so they look like they're a little different, each of them. Of course, as you bend them, they will lose some detail. So you'll have to go ahead and put that back in. And sometimes your molds don't have very good detail, like the shells. So you have to go back in and add it. This is a really quick, shabby job, but give them little eyes. I'm using a different tool to do the eyes in the other room. One of the round little ball points. So there's that. Little divots for the nose. Give him a smile. All, all of them are smiling, by the way. You just really can't tell from the top down. Need what? Need one more here? Sounds good. I think we need to move some of these guys a little further into the what will be the water once I dye it blue. Because so that will give it a little bit of depth. You might need another rock in the center there or another leaf or something. Oh, look, there's a leaf. There we go. Problem solved. Just going to bend it before it gets too dry. Oops, now it's upside down. Oh, they're going now it's right side up. I think they're all kind of pointing that way. Too bendy? I think so. So yeah, play around with it. Whatever works for you will eventually turn out. Just don't break it or throw it out and you'll be fine. Still doesn't look right. Maybe need an escrow. Maybe you just need to move the rock, actually. That might be part of the issue. Oh, there we go. That balances things out. Okay. Next drill. Put bay powder in between each time so things stick. Could I possibly bug you to bring me a damp sponge? Sure. Thank you. I'm just asking whether our ladies here to bring me a damp sponge so I can do the edges while you guys see. Because I was not very prepared this time. And there's another turtle. We're going to go like this. Thank you so much. Look at that. We've got a damn sponge. It's like magic. It's amazing. Okay. Okay, we'll do another. Pull those fins. Of course, my fingers are now damp from that damp sponge. They want to stick to everything. You may have to trim some of these things because just how the molds are. If you're free honey, it's not just a big problem for that, but... Let's put the flippers a little bit more forward so it looks like he's really eager. Let's give him some really big back feet. We'll just squish him a little shallower. Dabble him up. Sometimes just rolling because of the clay it's stuck on your thing will actually give it a texture. Or you can use different kinds of patterns. Different tools will do different things. I just don't have them here at the moment. I didn't bring my tool kit. I can't believe I'm that forgetful. Smooth that over. Give him some eyes. Those are the worst eyes I've ever seen. 
I think he's evil or possessed, one of the two. Make a smile. I'm going to assume that's a smile. Two little divots for a nose. I think my thumb was resting on the back of his shell the whole time. We have to redo the shell lines. Which are apparently the worst I've ever done. If the clay will start to stick to the end, just rub it off. Okay, good enough for this. I will sponge them down there, just in there. Great things now I'm not being attached. Oh, there we go. Doesn't that look great? This will be so interesting. Okay, we've got our damp sponge now. Amazing how that worked. You're actually going to let it dry in this. Usually for about a week and take it out. Make sure it's very well wrapped because this clay piece here will absorb the moisture. And because you don't want shrink too much to do that ring in the bottom. And if that ring shrinks too much, it can crack, which it likely will. And you'll likely be patching up in the cleaning stage. So don't be surprised by that. Okay, I'm just going to keep going like that. Look at that. And the edge is nicely rounded. You'd almost think it was wheeled and then decorated. But you guys now know better, and I will be back with the glazed piece for glazing. Here's to give you another demonstration later, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, here's our turtle bowl. It's been drying for one week. As you can see the amount that it's already um, shrunk. A bit more than I wanted, but very typical. Because I'm going to be doing these guys separate, I have already gone through, and I've marked them all. So I can just put them to the side and glaze them separately. It's an optional step. You could have secured them and glazed them as was. And with lots of these, I actually noted which ones had the flippers going sideways, just so I knew exactly which turtle to put where. They were stuck a little bit, so I had to be really delicate with them. I'm just going to pull off all the turtles. Just if they're separate, it makes glazing so much easier. Like right now, they aren't too soft. It's leather hard. It's a beautiful state to clean in. Like handling fine chocolate. Okay. I also marked where all these guys were, just making little marks like S for star, C for clam, kind of directional arrows. These guys are really fragile, and I did put little lines to show exactly where they went. Just be very careful with those, those are so fragile. This guy here, a little tiny S denoting that it's actually a shell. But I should make it a little bit more obvious. Not much room though, because it didn't hide very much. Okay, at R for rock. Another clamshell, another swirly. These guys are so delicate. I already broke one and had to glue them back together. You can see where my patch job is kind of right there. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's super delicate. And this is the one that really broke on me. So I'm going to see if I can get him off without breaking him again. So yeah. You can see in the back he's really broke. I'm going to see if I can't patch up a little bit more without putting too much pressure because he's just so, so, so delicate. Just putting a little bit of slip and absolutely no pressure whatsoever on this guy. Yeah, that's all I dare do. Put him to the side. Whew, okay, he's down. Now for his friend. I also got a picture of this before I took everything off, so I can always look back and see exactly who was where. You guys 
to go to the side of dry. I don't want to bump them. I don't want to jostle them. I don't want to break them. Now for this guy. Because he shrunk, means his foot also shrunk. You can't slide him sideways. It also means you can't rest weight on him. So generally you cradle him against your chest. Take your fingers. And carefully get him upside down. This is the tricky part. You'll get this frame off without laying him rub or slide. And there we go. And he's still a little bit flexible, so I gotta watch how much pressure I put where. As you can see, he's kind of bending. So this is your typical, um, when it comes out, it's all kind of crackled and broken because it shrunk at different rates even with all the slip we used. So we are going to go and fix that up a bit. Okay. Sometimes you don't even know where to start because these things are so much like this. But your best spot, just a little bit of slip and start filling in your cracks. In this case, you might need a luck slip. Just try not to make the top of your foot uneven because that's gonna be your level spot. Any spots that kind of bowed out, just push them back in. Just don't push so hard that you buckle the backing of the bowl. Put your damp sponge handy. He's going to be your friend. Make some nice smooth lines. And just fine tune any cracks, fill them. You may have to do this next week as well, because when it dries some more, it will crack, because your fresher clay will shrink more than your existing clay. So you got to keep that in mind too. You can use tools to do this as well, like some of those tools with the little shaped edges. That will also work. Every once in a while we see it, but a rock gets into our clay or our slip. Then we just have to go through and peel it out. Uh, you can do it the next stage later if you want. Just because they have a tendency to chip or crack when they get fired in the kiln. Okay, I can see a little bit of an unlevel spot there. Use the tool. That's that spot where it kind of bowed out when it dried and cracked. I can look at it more next week and level it out. But there's our foot. It looks like most of it's in fairly good shape. So if need be, you could put in lots of slip, let it dry, and use this just to carve a perfect circle. But this gouge is pretty deep, pretty quick. It's just easier to use my fingers. So I don't have much for in the way of fingernails. Our next fun is this rough edge. As you can see, it's rough, it's ragged. Things are falling off as it sits. So yeah, it's not something we want just sitting there. There's a few ways to trim this. Um, some people will use their sharp. Just kind of go to an edge just to get the rough edges off. Or you can use it to then, if you go straight up and down, you can get harder angles. It's not my favorite. Um, you can use something like this just to take off the edge. And use your sponge to do it afterwards. As you can see, all these little pieces, they're different widths. So that's another thing you have to watch. Basically pick which works best for you. You'll have tools with angles and stuff. So you can decide what kind of angle you want. Once again, this, it's kind of jarring. It's not what I want on this. I'm gonna use this and then just smooth it over with the sponge. And I 
use two hands to brace it so I get a more even cut. But keep in mind your different thicknesses of the clicks of how you rolled it. It will also affect how much your piece bites in at a certain time. So you better just go really slow and steady. Or if you're a fan of the wheel and you know how to use the trimming tools and the walkers, you can use that too to make a perfectly circular piece, assuming your foot is even. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lopsided piece that is really, really different. that goes to the side as you can see it is quite rough it's to be expected at this point this is where your sponge comes in handy a sponge fixes a ton of woes It's often easier to do this when it's actually sitting on top. And you can either use water or really runny slip here. Um, I'm just using this really runny slip because I don't want this to do any little bits of minor cracking. There's also a few rough edges up here that will also smooth the slip into. If you want, you can go over the whole bowl with it too, just to smooth things out, remove any of the powders, stuff like that. Of course, once you wet it down, your edges will be tacky, so your fingerprints will leave marks. Just be careful when lifting it. Now you have this. So we're going to stand it down there. So now I can do the upper edge. I'm not going to do much of this because I like the ripples and how it's going to work with how I'm going to do the sand. So I'm going to leave it like that. Also, the glaze I'm using is quite thick, so it should fill those in. Also, you do too much in here, it's going to erase all your marks from where we had all of our turtles and stuff. But we've got the pictures on the phone to remind us how it was done, so we can go through and fix that up later. If you do want to fix anything up, like let's say this really rough spot here, you can just take a little bit of slip, either your finger or a sponge. And kind of fill it in and just kind of even over the top. Don't push hard or it'll just squish right out. Just kind of like just filling up some of the holes and divots and stuff we get. There we go. So there we go. He's ready to dry for another week or so and then I can glaze him. Okay, and here's our turtle bowl with the glazing before it's fired. Just wanted to show it to you. So here's all of our turtles. I did have to rearrange a couple because some of them warped in the bisque kiln so they wouldn't sit where they were supposed to. So I just took all these. These were all just glazed in my hands so I can easily handle them. And now I'm just tacking them on with um, more of the glaze, this base coat here, which is San Diego. And so that will allow it to stick on for transport and hopefully will hold it firm enough for the kiln. Because this bowl is at a bit of an angle, this is kind of pushing it. This usually only works well with very horizontal pieces, but we shall see shortly. Okay, so here I have actually added the water, which happens to be Emerald Falls and a lot of the crystals to get that wave-like pattern. And as you see, there's some lighter brown kind of dappled in there too. That is our blue azure crystals, which is mostly a clear with some greenish blue one just for a little bit of contrast for like a shoreline so I've added quite a bit there there's enough there it actually runs a little bit as you can see as I tip it I have painted it quite heavy along all the edges 
I did pick up the rocks and the couple of pieces of the kelp there when I was painting. These guys I just kind of put there and put enough that it tilted. And I used tweezers to carefully place a few of the really large crystals just to make sure that they're fairly evenly spread. And that's how it's going to go into the kiln once it's dried. So we will see when it comes out. Okay, so here's our turtle bowl. It's been fired. As you can see, the pieces are on very, very firmly. The emerald falls did coat in very nicely with the crystals. There are a few dabs of our colors here. I have to go look to see what it was again, but it turned out very nice for the water effect. Uh, the only thing I did notice was that with some of the shifting, so you remember I had to move this guy out from down here because everything had warped. Well, because I shifted things around, I didn't think you could, but you can see a couple of small marks. This one here is very noticeable where I had a turtle coming in. So what I'm going to do is make another shell, fire it, and then just use some two-part epoxy to glue it on to keep it in place to cover that up. Um, I think next time I probably wouldn't put the marks. I just take very, very good pictures and then use that to put them back in order. But otherwise it didn't turn out too bad.